I'm Will Jones, presenting the work of my undergraduate thesis, Multi-Level Models and Missing Data Models for Crowdsource Bicycle Route Ratings. This work was advised by Andrew Bray at Reed College. So my thesis started with looking at a data set of bicycle route ratings collected by the Ride Report mobile app. On the left is a screenshot of the app, which automatically collects route data of the user's ride and then asks them to give a binary rating. You can see the app asking for the rating at the top of the screenshot. From the data, Knox Software, the developers of the app, created what they call the stress map, shown on the right, where each road segment is colored according to the average rating of the rides that went through it. This app started in Portland. It's intended to help cyclists find better routes and city planners to identify which parts of the city need better bike infrastructure. But this average rating, th th this averaging of the ratings, while simple, may not be the best way to create this map. It doesn't account for the way traffic, road conditions, and a bunch of other factors influence ride ratings. So I set out to build a probabilistic model that accounts for these things. That is, I wanted to create a model that predicts ride rating based on the route, road conditions, and other factors. Once I got into this project, I realized there were actually three big challenges involved in tackling this problem. The first was to develop a model for the data collection process, one that corrects for weather, traffic, and other, and other variables. The second was to adapt the, match, the map matching algorithm for modeling output. That is, we need to convert the GPS traces of rides to sequences of road segments. Ride Report already has software that does this within the OpenStreetMap software, but we don't have software that gives us output we can use to model, so that algorithm needs to be adapted. And then the third piece is developing models for routes. These need to be able to compute a parameter for each road segment, which isn't something to do easy to do city. I only had 10 months for this project, and I was learning as I went along. So I had to narrow my focus, and I ended up just focusing on the first piece. This put me in the situation of creating a model to predict ride rating without considering the effective route, the main effect we're interested in. So we have to be cautious in interpreting these models, but I think they're, they're a good start to figuring out a statistical solution to this problem. So what do we want to include in this model? We ended up creating a model that accounted for Riders' different rating criteria, ride length, the time of day, which we use as a proxy for traffic and other uh, related things, uh, weather conditions, which includes daily summaries like average temperature, mean wind speed, and max gust speed, and hourly rain data. And we have a variable for uh, rainfall during the hour of the ride and then rain, cumulative rainfall for the uh, four hours uh, prior to it. And then we were faced with the question, how do we incorporate these into a model? Weather and ride length are pretty straightforward. We just have them as linear predictors in our design matrix, just like we would with any other uh, logistic regression. For the different riders, we need to recognize that they have different frequencies at which they will give negative ratings. Some riders always give positive ratings, while others are a little more critical. We can reflect this in the model by giving each rider a different intercept using a random intercept model. And then time of day is a tricky variable because its effect must be cyclic and nonlinear. So we use cubic splines that are constrained to be cyclic. And we, use, we actually use two of them. We have one for weekday and one for weekends because we expect those patterns to be different. So what does this model look like written down? Uh, first, let's look at the data. We have y sub i, our ratings, which are 0 and 1. Um, x is the design matrix with the ride length and weather variables. Ji is the rider of the ith ride. T sub i is the start time of the ride, of the start time of ride i in hours that ranges from 0 to 24. And then W sub i is an indicator for weekend. That's either 0 uh, if it's a weekday, uh, 1 if it's a weekend. Then we have a logistic regression model with the predictors comprising three parts the different intercepts for riders, the alpha sub j, uh, the linear predictors, beta times xi, and, and then the cyclic cubic splines for time of day, s sub w sub i of t. Um, and s sub w sub i of t are two different cyclic splines for weekends and weekdays. They're uh, by w sub i. So that w sub i takes in the value of either 0 or 1. So you either have s sub 0 or s sub 1. Um, and that'll sort of choose which of these uh, spline functions we're using. Uh, these splines have knots at every three hours. That those are the places where the, the piecewise functions connect. 
uh, to fit this model, I fit it in R using the GAM4 package so that we could incorporate both random intercepts and the splines into uh, one model. Here are the estimates and 95% confidence intervals for the coefficients for weather and length. The model doesn't uh, shows there doesn't seem to be an effect of mean wind speed and max gust speed, but it does show a higher mean temp that higher mean temperature increases the chance of negative ratings. Reflecting back, though, I think the d daily weather summaries weren't the best data to use. Given how much wind speeds and temperatures can vary through the day and across locations, I think future work should try to find more frequent summary data from several weather stations in Portland. The rainfall data, though, was based on hourly data, so I feel more confident in those estimates. Note that the rainfall during the hour of the ride doesn't seem to have a clear effect, the rainfall of the past hour. Um, but the rainfall for the past four hours does. Um, you know, it increases the chance that there will be a negative rating slightly. I was commuting to school my bike at the time, and it was easy to see why this might be from my own experience. Bike lanes flood. In a city like Portland, people are used to being in the rain, but when it's raining for a while, that's when hazards like puddles and slippery roads become a problem. So I think recent rainfall was a good variable to have in this model. It turns out those random intercepts we used for the riders were very informative for the model. The table on this slide compares the AIC between four different models. The model I just presented at the, at the top row, and then three models where I've dropped one of the three components I described earlier. Between the three uh, predictor components, you can see that leaving out the random intercepts from the model caused the most drastic increase in the Yakayuki information criterion. Um, however, part of this effect may be coming from the effect of route. After exploring uh, the route data, I found that for many cyclists, most of their ratings are for the same route between their home and workplace. So if route and rider are often correlated, we should expect the intercepts to pick up on the effect of route when route is not in the model, which, isn't in, which it isn't in these models. If that's the case, then it's no surprise that the intercepts improve the model fit so much. These ratings, after all, are all about the roots. Um, here's the marginal plot of the time of day effect on probability of a negative rating um, by weekday and weekend. So these are what the, those cubic splines ended up looking like. It's interesting that there is a peak in the evenings on weekdays, but not in the mornings. Um, I'm not sure I have a good explanation for this. It's possible that the commute home is somehow more stressful. Uh, perhaps there's an interaction term with whether the sun is up. You know, maybe it's darker during the commute home. Um, and that, you know, can cause more negative ratings. And the model doesn't seem to find any pattern for weekends, though. Um, we don't expect as strong a pattern as we might on weekdays, so maybe the pattern was too subtle to be picked up by the splines. Um, there are far fewer rides on weekends, so there's less data. So it, you know, if you have less data, you're not going to be able to fit much of a trend. So I think that it's plausible that they just, they just wasn't able to, uh, you know, find any particular pattern there. One of the most interesting relationships these models show is between time of day effect and who is writing. The four panels of the plot show the, pre show the predicted probabilities of negative rating by time of day for four different models. The models on the left have the random intercepts with the writer control, while the models on the right, uh, they only have one intercept. They don't have uh, intercepts by writer. The models on the top are with the time of day splines, um, so they have a time control, and the models on the bottom have no time control. And these are all weekday rides. And so if you look at the lower left, this is the one that has the writer intercepts but no time control. You can see there is still some time structure. You can see there's, you know, there's those two columns of high probability uh, of negative ratings at the rush hour times. That you know that if you took the average uh, rating, it would sort of, you know, pull it up. Um, you know, so the answer to the question, why are there more ratings at rush hour? Well, part of it is it's just the the time of day, you know, and the traffic. But part of it also is who is writing. Um, this also makes sense if you think about what we said about the intercepts. They're likely correlated with a writer's typical route. A typical route probably also has one or two typical times a day, i.e. rush hour. Um, this suggests that the writer intercepts, writer time of day, and writer route are all correlated. Uh, 
The models we did were a start towards building a more accurate stress map. I think future iterations can learn from this work, starting with the model I just developed with writer, uh, writer random intercepts, weather variables, uh, and cyclic splines to model the time of day effects. Future work can also learn from the cautionary tales. I was a little naive with the weather data, and I should have used, uh, taken a little more care to use more local data, both in terms of time and location. And when the models get to modeling route, we should be aware of the correlations between rider intercepts, time of day, and route. Those are the major findings of my work, and I hope it eventually leads to, you know, building the actual, you know, improved stress map. Um, doing this work was a huge learning experience, and I'm honored to be able to tell you a little bit about it. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, so just a quick reminder, if you're just joining us, you can type questions into the chat box and I'll read them to our uh, presenter. So right now, there is one question that uh, seems like a logistics thing, which is somebody wants to know which R Studio package did you use to fit these models? Oh, it was the, uh, the GAM4 package, so I can, yeah. GAMM4. Um, I'm trying to remember. Either it it, it, um, it uses actually two packages. It it uh, there are two different modeling packages to fit the same uh, model because it goes back and forth between uh, the GAM fun function GAM from the GAM package to fit the additive uh, part of the model, and um, I think it's the GAM package and then the uh, LME4 package to fit, fit the random intercepts. Sure. Great. Um, and then I guess I, I'm not sure if you ex maybe you mentioned further mm -hmm. explanation of this, but um, that graph you showed where the rate where there was a higher chance of negative ratings at the evening rush hour compared to the morning rush hour. Mm -hmm. This one. Uh, yeah. So could that just I mean could that just simply be you know end of workday fatigue? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I, this is one of those things where I, I can I can tell you that there's a higher probability in the evening. I can't tell you why <laughs> um, from the data, but uh, yeah, I, th I think there's a whole bunch of range of explanations. I think really for any of these variables. Um, great, um, great. Well, let me see. I don't see any other questions. Uh, so thank you very much.